Certainly will. Uh, good afternoon. The Metropolitan Short-Term Rental Board of, of Appeals is now in session for the regularly scheduled meeting of October 26, 2022. I'm Bonnie O. McBroom III, the Short-Term Rental Property Chief for the Metro Codes Department, and I will be presenting the cases to the board for review in today's public hearing. At this time, I would ask everyone to either turn off their cell phones or put them on silence as to not to disrupt today's meeting. The procedure will be for staff to introduce the case record. At the conclusion of our presentation, the appellant will present their case to the board along with any person in support. If there is opposition to the case, the board will then hear from those parties. After the opposition has pre presented their testimony, the appellant will have a period for rebuttal. The board in their rules provides the appellant in cases without opposition five minutes for the appellant to present their case. In a contested case, the board provides 10 minutes for each side to present their testimony. Should the appellant wish to provide rebuttal testimony, the appellant should reserve some of their allotted 10 minutes for rebuttal. The Metro Code requires that these proceedings be taped, therefore it is imperative that anyone addressing the board come forward, speak into the microphone, identify yourself, and then make your presentation. It should be noted if it is found that anyone has presented false or misleading testimony to the board that would have affected the board's um, decision, any approval may be revoked at a later date by means of show calls hearing. The board will go through the cases set for public hearing today. After both sides of the case presentations are made, the board will discuss and vote on the case. The board is vested with the power to act on the cases before us today under the provisions as outlined in section 6.28.035 of the Metropolitan Code. The code requires four members of the seven-member board to be present to constitute a quorum. The board rules require a majority vote in the affirmative of the members present to grant the appellant's application. In the event that the majority vote is not achieved, the case will remain on the board's agenda for the next regularly scheduled public hearing. Applications that fail to receive a majority affirmative vote in the next regularly scheduled public hearing shall be deemed denied by operation of law. The appellant or any aggrieved property owner may request a hearing within 60 days of this public hearing. Further, the appellant or any aggrieved property owner may also appeal the board's decision to chancery court within the same 60-day period. After that time is elapsed, the board's decision becomes final and no further action can be taken. If you are an appellant and your case is granted, it will be necessary for you to obtain the permit for which you have applied. It should be noted that a permit must be obtained within two years of the board approval to remain valid. I submit that all cases have been filed in proper order and the appellants have been notified by certified mail. As required by the code, all effective property owners have been notified by legal, notif uh, legal notification. Sign requirements have been met as required by the code. At this point, we would um, check to see if we have any elected officials that wish to address the board. Seeing none. We'll go to the first case on today's docket. This is case 22-38, Julia Kenny and Aaron Bass, 4509 Michigan Avenue. Is the appellant present? Is there opposition? So we will have 10 minutes allotted for each side to present. On October 21st of 2021, the appellants previously purchased property at 507 Crowley, Crowley Drive on Gronica's host compliance tracking for the property indicates that an Airbnb was uh, website was posted for February the 4th of 2022, and a VRBO website ad was posted on February 1st of 2022. On February 25th of 2022, Inspector John Feltz identified the property as a short-term rental property advertising and operating a short-term rental without a permit. 
And he sent, a, he sent the appellants a notice of violation. Subsequently, the website ads and calendars were changed to a 30-night minimum, minimum within the remedial time period, and the case was closed. However, there were documents days four in March and two in April after the remedial time period. Uh, May 3rd of 2022, the appellants sold that property. On May 10th of 2022, the appellants acquired 45, 4509 Michigan Avenue. On May 26th of 2022, the Coast Department received an email to the STRP questions email box that was in response to an STRP neighbor notification letter that they received. The person that sent the email wrote that the letter informed them that the owner of 4509 Michigan Avenue intended to obtain an owner-occupied short-term rental property permit. The emailer stated that, that based upon uh, what they had observed, the owners do not live at 4509 Michigan Avenue. After viewing the social media presence of the owner, the uh, they concluded that Mr. Bass and Ms. Kenny probably lived in San Diego, California. Program manager Robert Osborne reviewed the email and responded, in R6 zone districts, as in all single-family, two-family, multifamily residential zone districts, as of January 1st of 2022, the Metro STRP ordinance stipulates that owner-occupied STRP permits are the only type of permit available in those zone districts. August 1st of 2022, an owner-occupied permit application was initiated and the permit was issued. Proof of ownership, Aaron Bass's driver's license and bank statement. Even though the appellant's social media and ownership uh, of residents in, in Ensenadas, California, were reason to question if 4509 Michigan Avenue would be the appellant's primary residence, the permit had to be issued. This is because the appellant provided the proof of residence documentation required by the STRP ordinance, coupled with the fact that the property was purchased 22 days earlier. This was an insufficient amount of time to determine if the appellants intended to move to the property and establish primary or principal residence. On August 12th of 2022, Inspector John Phelps received an email that repeated the allegations made in the previous email of May 26, 2022. Inspector Phelps opened an investigation, and Inspector Phelps found the following. The Davidson County Assessor of Property Property Records card for 4509 Michigan Avenue lists the mailing address as 1362 Orpheus Avenue, Ensenadas, California. Davidson County Metro Trustee property tax record for 4509 Michigan Avenue list and mailing address is 1362 Orpheus Avenue in Sinatis, California. The warranty deed for 4509 Michigan Avenue lists the mailing address is 1362 Orpheus Avenue in Sinatis, California. The deed of trust for 4509 Michigan Avenue List the lender as American Pacific Mortgage Company, 3000 Lava Ridge Court, Suite 200, Roseville, California, and states that the lender is California Corporation under the laws of California. The deed of trust contains a second home writer noted on page two of the deed and with complete second home writer um, spelled out on page 12. And this uh, writer states that this will be a second home for the uh, property of 4509 Michigan Avenue. Aaron Bass's social media, medium.com, living in San Diego, California. Instagram, San Diego-Nashville, short-term rental life, father of four. Facebook, lives in San Diego, California. Main page photo, both appellants and four children. Airbnb website ad host the ad advertisement from the Airbnb website. The host profile for Julia and Aaron lives in Ensenadas, California, remains posted as of this writing of October the 12th of 2022. The dwelling contains four sleeping rooms, bedrooms, which are pictured in the ad photos, none of which appear to be children's bedrooms. Julia Kenny Instagram uh, indicates that she moved from Nashville to San Diego, then to, then to Ensenadas. The photo of the home at 1362 Ensenadas, California. And the address appears on official documents as 1362 or, uh, Orpheus Avenue, Ensenadas, California, or 
1362 Orpheus Ave Avenue, Lucadia, California. This is the same address as Lucadia is a community located in Ensenadas. The following documents from SANDAG, which is the San Diego Association of Governments, explains this, included are two Google Maps that reflect this. Due to the California government, government code 6254.21, uh, it is difficult to obtain an official document with all three of the following, address, owner name, and parcel number, or APN. The following documents tie all three together. 1362 Orpheus Avenue, Ensenadas, California, property records from the county um, office.org, address, residential, owner-occupied, San Diego County, California, assessor, recorder, county clerk, Ernest J. Dronenberg, Jr., owner on deed, Julia Kenny, APN, or parcel number, 2543-702-000, San Diego County, California, treasurer, tax collector, current owner, Julia Kenny, APN or parcel number 254-370-2000. SANDAG, San Diego Association of Governments, uh, San Gius, the parcel re report address matched to the parcel number and the parcel lookup tool address matched to the parcel number. Google Maps, uh, Locadia, California, located in Encinitas, California. Owner-occupied permit application affidavit. And the appellants also have an SDR at 12598 Creekshire Pla uh, Place, Tigard, Oregon. And the first page of the Airbnb ad is included. On August 24th of 2022, a cancellation letter was sent giving the appellants 15 days from the date of the letter to cease advertising and operating the short-term rental property. On September the 2nd, the advertisement was removed. On September the 5th, it was reposted with a 30-night minimum stay. September the 6th, the short-term rental board appeal was filed. Okay. Any questions for Metro before we hear from the appellant? <coughs> no. Could the appellant step forward? There. You're going to head over to that chair right there. Great. Wait, am I wrong? Oh, I thought I was told that it was. No? I apologize. Let's see. Oh, we're good. Go ahead, sir. And because there's opposition, you, you have, you know, you're allotted time, but if you want to save any of that time in order to address any of the concerns that were brought up by uh, your neighbors who are here to offer some other information, you may want to do that. Sure. Okay. And for the record, we're going to need you to start with your name and your address and then tell us about your situation. Okay. You guys hear me? Yep. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Um, my name is Aaron Bass. I'm a resident of 4509 Michigan Avenue. I um, want to thank you guys, uh, members of the board, for hearing my request today. Um, I'm here to respectfully appeal the decision to revoke uh, my short-term rental permit with a claim that it's not my primary residence. Um, I've read the notes in detail, and while I completely understand how it looks to inquiring minds from the outside, as it should, as people should be looking into it, um, in reality, it's much more complicated than it appears. Um, I'm sure you've heard it before, but uh, a bit of backstory. Um, I've moved to Nashville when I was in the third grade with my family in 98. Um, I remember when Cool Springs was farmland, when there was nothing to do there, and uh, I've seen the city grow over the years, and it's, it's been my home and my roots are here. My immediate family, uh, parents, and brother live here as well. Um, I went through divorce in 2017. I have two young children, ages seven and nine. Um, as you see in the information I presented, they attend Pegram Elementary School uh, and live with their mother part-time in Pegram. So those are my two boys, um, and we split our schedules between them. 
Um, I've traveled for work since 2015. Um, I, as I said, I lived in Nashville that whole time. Traveling for work since 2015, I was out of town, as I've always been. Um, ask any of my friends. They've always known me as the guy that travels constantly. Um, it's always made housing very difficult. It's always made life very difficult, um, especially after divorce with kids. That's a hard one. And um, trying to find stability for them and trying to find a situation that would work uh, has been the biggest challenge. And you know, feeling like you have one foot in, one foot out, but that's kind of at the heart of all of it. Um, the boys, when after the divorce, when I was traveling, I would spend time in my parents' house, in my brother's house. We would stay with friends and family, hotels if we could afford it. Um, so that was hard for them because they were obviously going to school and then they're doing their homework in the hotel room, eating breakfast in hotel rooms. And it just made it difficult because at the time I was paying obviously child support and all that. So um, it was extremely difficult. It was when I stayed with my family, it was 45 minutes from Franklin to Pegram. Uh, so that each way, to school was difficult um, and it just wasn't working and so um, yeah all that to say fast forward we've worked very hard to try to find a house and a, a, a place that can work for our unique situation obviously me being in this situation is it's tough but it's you know the life I've chosen but we're trying to find uh, the right place so fast forward to Crowley Drive we bought 507 Crowley um, after a bad uh, conversation with a real estate agent who told us you could S you could do an STR on H on an HPR as long as you were the first side to get it, which obviously, as you guys know, is not true. Uh, so we were like t totally naive, totally new um, to this, trying to figure out, you know, hey, this we could rent this, the boys could stay here, we could keep our stuff here. Um, and we obviously wanted to have it be nice for people that want to stay there to rent, to get rental income, but also have it be a place the boys would enjoy. So we weren't, you know, our kids are a little bit older, they're not going to have stuffed animals all over the house and stuff like that, and we had places for them to put things. Um, but so we put a lot of work into that, come to find out, obviously, we can't do it on HPR. Um, so we stopped. We did have a couple stays we felt horrible about. We developed connections with some of the people who booked. So we just felt horrible. And we were like, maybe we could just like let them stay. And that was a mistake. And, and I'll take responsibility and apologize for that. Um, uh, then, so we sold that because we couldn't afford to have that without rental income. So we sold 507 Crowley, we were devastated, the kids were sad. And we were like, all right, we'll do it again. Let's try something again. And we found 4509 Michigan. And we were even more excited because that was even closer to the boys' school um, and in a place where we thought people might enjoy renting um, as well. Um, and then, of course, there was a complaint there to stop running immediately. And then we were, of course, sad again because we spent a lot of time. So as a San Diego situation, I'll address, um, I got a job offer there in 2019. It was remote, but I did move there briefly, but it was still similar situation now. It was, it was kind of half and half. And um, so I did move there, and I had a lot of my clients there, and I changed my social media because it was in my better interest to have them know I was there, or at least there most of the time or some of the time. So I changed that, and so um, I don't go on social media a ton. I was shocked to even see that San Diego was listed on my Facebook because I haven't posted on Facebook in however long. Uh, on my LinkedIn, that was because I do I moved from sales into trying to build a property management business. So I was I knew uh, some of Julia's friends who did STR in San Diego. So I was like, man, I could do remote and try to kind of work do that if I could. Um, but I'm very much a beginner. I'm not building properties. I'm not you know doing multifamily or anything like that. I was just trying to find a place for my family and for the kids um, and that we could run out. Um, as for my fiance, she lives full time in San Diego, so that's her house that she purchased. Um, uh, and she has a, a normal W-2 job, so that's why she's able to uh, qualify for the loan a lot easier than me, who does not have a regular W-2 job now. Um, and then this place in Michigan Avenue has four bedrooms, whereas the house in San Diego has two bedrooms, and you guys know prices there are insane. Um, and so the, the whole point of this was to eventually come uh, for her to move. She has two years left at her company, and then we're going to all be together here when she's done. For now, I'm the one that lives here. Um, the Oregon property that was mentioned in the report, uh, which she bought long before she... That's your, that's your time. And that's 10 minutes. Five minutes. That's got to be five. Five or 10. That's five minutes. Alicia, was that five or 10? Five. That was five minutes. Five. Cool. Okay. So, so I can just do a couple more minutes and I know I need to leave yeah, time yeah. for the rebuttal. And you'll just have a couple minutes for rebuttal. Sure. Got right? It. Isn't that correct? 10, 10 per side? Hold on. Mac? Isn't that correct? Ten per side, if there's opposition. Yes, ma'am, that is correct, okay. and they need to reserve any wish, any time they wish for rebuttal. Yeah. 
Yeah, Got so it. be very cognizant of the time right sure. now. Go Thank ahead. you, understood. Um, the Oregon property that my fiance uh, has in Oregon, she bought back in 2013 for $200,000 or whatever it was. So she's already had that. This is not a situation where we're buying up all these properties where we're these real estate moguls <laughs> from out of town. Um, I've always lived here and it's her who has um, a very good situation with her job that's made it possible for us to do what we're doing to try to find this. So that W-2 understanding is important. Um, I also completely understand that there's passionate positions about short-term rentals. I understand, you know, your job is to make sure it's not the wild, wild west. Neighbors are concerned. Um, I understand all that. And the other property that she manages, we have a great relationship with the neighbors. No one complains. Um, we have all five-star reviews. We're constantly telling people, hey, after nine, be quiet. Do not bother the neighbors. And they love us, and they think it's great. So um, all that to say, um, I'm not some, some out-of-state investor, and, and I'm just generally trying to find stability for the kids and trying to make some rental income in the meantime. Um, so even though my situation is unique, I just ask that you consider my request today and, and promise, if given the opportunity, we'll do everything we can, and, and I'll make sure that um, I manage it well and that I'm happy to have an ongoing conversation with neighbors and, and open communication as well. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. So what would you say, Leisha? Uh, Mr. Bass has about two minutes left. Three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Great. And there's someone here in opposition today. Why don't you give a little space up there? Could you come forward? Hi. Right. Thanks so much for taking time to come down here today. Sure. Could you, for the record, just state your name and your address and then share with us your, your experience? Sure. My name is John Evans, and we live at 4509 Michigan Avenue. Um, one of the main concerns we have right now is with it, the category being a primary residence. Um, there's a family currently living in the property right now. So they're living in the property. Um, I actually met them a couple weeks ago. I spoke with them, and they had told me they'll be living in the house for the next few months. Um, went on uh, Zillow the day that I had talked to the neighbor, and I have a printout which has the owner's wife listed as the property owner, uh, dated three weeks ago, that states that this is a short-term lease, 30 days or more. So there's currently someone that is renting the property. Um, outside of that, we, we live next door, so you know, before there was someone in the property, um, we had some bad experiences with short-term rentals. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Could I just confirm, did you say you live at 4509 Michigan Avenue? No, 4513. Okay, 13. Yeah. Okay. 513. I, thank you. Uh, so I, was, I was like, that is a cozy place. So, okay, no, thank you. No. So 4513. Yeah, we live right beside it. Got um, it, got it. So, so what you're sharing with us is, in fact, at the moment, there's kind of a long-term renter in there. There is. I spoke with them. They said they'll be renting for multiple months okay. at the property. Great. Um, um, currently. So we spoke with them and again, have that print out outside of that. Some of the information was mentioned, but we just had noticed that, um, nobody was living there for a primary residence. We had a few weekends where the Airbnbs was extremely disruptive. People were partying, doing drugs in the backyard. We just felt like there wasn't, um, responsible decision-making with who was actually going to stay at the property, um, which has kind of just taken me and my wife's piece away from our home, being fairly close to the property. Outside of that, we do have have a couple documents which state that they live in California. Um, there is that property in California that they own. Um, they very rarely, it looks like, rent it out. But in the bio, it says this is our family home where we raise our children in the California um, property that they own. It states that um, they have, a, I believe, a newborn child or a child that's one years old um, that lives there. So we believe that that is their residence that they primarily use. Outside of that, we have some additional documents that were stated previously with the deeds and property taxes. All personal tax documents are requested to be sent to the property in California. Um, outside of that, they did have a previous Airbnb. We have a comparison of how the homes are designed. It's the same furniture, wallpaper, same process as the previous short-term rental that was in place. 
when we initially received the notice for the short-term rental, um, it did have Mr. Bass's information. Um, it did say with any issues to please contact Evan Bass, his brother, who does live in uh, the greater Tennessee area, Franklin area, um, which we that was kind of the initial thing we thought was kind of weird. Why would we contact the brother instead of the owner of the property um, with any issues for the Airbnb? trouble you to ask, are there any documents that you have there that aren't mentioned in the materials that Mr. McBroom mentioned? And if there are, could you be so kind as to share them with the board? Sure. So um, I didn't see the most recent one, which would be the house listed for rent. I have that that I can share. Um, this would be a comparison of the two properties. Mr. McBroom's going to grab those from you. Sure. Other materials or any other information you wanted to share with us? So outside of that, I mean, that's a lot of it was covered in the information earlier. Um, we're just concerned. We don't want a short-term rental in the area. We don't believe that they meet the guidelines as a primary residence where you would live. Um, and we believe that those documents support that. Thank you so much for your sure. time today. We really appreciate it. We're going to glance at these real quick, and you can head back. Thanks yeah, sure. again That's for fun. taking the time. Mr. Bass, if you want to come back up, I'm resetting the clock. Give us a second to look at these documents before we hear from you again. warned you all the the mics are live no matter what so <clears throat> to watch what you say under your breath no I'm kidding <laughs> yeah that's news
All righty. All right, Mr. Bass, you have another couple of minutes, three minutes, I think, to be exact. Is that correct? Three, three okay, three and a half minutes to, to offer any rebuttal. And then I'm quite sure that we are going to have some questions for you as well. So sure. I'm going to start the timer and then I will cut you off when and if you go over. I'm sure you will. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. So as for the um, family staying out the property, so obviously receiving that notice, like that familiar wave of panic comes over like, oh my gosh, like we thought finally we we're, we're in the, in the situation that, that this is going to work. And then, uh, I'm back essentially where I'm, where I started, which can't afford it without rental income. Um, so I essentially panicked and was like, I, I'm going to try to find renters. I'll stay with family. I'll travel and work. But that's there's a family in there renting for three months. And they said, oh, can we extend? And I said, no, because I'm appealing and hoping to be able to rent it out. And I'm not letting you extend because I'm hoping that it's different by then. Um, the des as, for, as for the design, the design is the same because we're, we're, <laughs> we're not going to spend an entire more amount of money to furnish a new house. Um, we had the furniture. We had the wallpaper. So of course, we're just going to go ahead and put it into our new property. And then the kids go, oh, it's my same wallpaper, Daddy. I love the leopard print, um, which I know that some people think kids wouldn't, but they loved it. Uh, so that was to save money. Um, and the also coming back to the, the fact that my children live here, too. Yes. Um, so my wife, and long, story, long story long, my fiance's daughter, her husband, her father passed away when she was young. So she has a daughter that now calls me Daddy. We have a son together. That doesn't mean we live every day together because we don't. We're a modern family in the truest sense of the word. Um, um, so I have two boys here who I love very much, who I spend at least a week and a half with every month, and I'm here on top of that uh, in our parenting plan, plus the uh, holidays and summers that we spent here. We were here the entire like two and a half months out of the summer, which no one's failed to mention, um, where my, meaning my fiance was too, but I'm otherwise on my own. Um, lastly, the opponents are failing to mention the actual party house in our street, which is 4510B, the three-story home across the street, uh, throws parties. It's a long-term rent and it's multiple uh, tenants, and they're the loudest I've ever heard, in the, in the, uh, to the point that it's kept my children up uh, from sleeping at night, where they're like, Daddy, it's loud, they're doing music. So, you know, I understand the, the uproar about short-term rentals, but, you know, again, I'm, I've am i seen it, too, where the, there's all these single renters in there, and they're in a three-story house throwing rooftop parties, but no one mentions that. It's just, oh, it's the short-term rental guy who, you know, you know, whatever, and, and there's, there's of course, um, thoughts about it. So again, I'm not here to, to argue or fight. I, I understand, you know, my neighbor's concerns a thousand percent, and I'd, I'd be willing to do anything as far as a new, new guidelines or anything that would be uh, advisable from you guys or for them to have open texting. I, we've called plenty of our renters short term and said, hey, you need to be quiet or we're kicking you out. Um, it's happened probably five or six times, um, and we love it. Every our, our initial message that we send to every guest who requests a book. We don't do instant booking, by the way. Um, we say, hey, by the way, what are you going to be doing here? Um, and by the way, you need to be quiet after 9 p.m. or we reserve the right to cancel your stay. So we care very much about noise. If I had heard about that, we do have a ring app, so we do monitor here and there without being creepers. But, you know, I, I do care about it and I do care about the neighborhood and I care about the city. Um, yeah. And I, again, I understand it's a unique situation. I understand, you know, all the points presented. Um, but again, this is this is my home. I've always considered it my home, and um, I'll do anything I can to make sure it's in good standing with you guys and everyone else. Thank you again. Great. Perfectly timed. Look at that. I put a timer on my own phone, so I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> Great. Um, okay. Well, I'm quite sure that we've got some questions for you. I know my first one right out of the gate is having looked at some of the materials that your neighbor uh, provided. It seems that your California property is also on Airbnb. Yeah, so that's, again, as I said, my fiance's house, who she bought. Um, and she, again, it's, it's, she lives there full time, so she can't rent it very much. If she go, if sometimes we'll go on a trip, we'll be like, let's go here. And so it'll be rented out, but it's not commonly at all. If, if, Hi, please. In? Excuse me. If I'm recalling um, the ad correctly, the first sentence says, this is our family home where we raise our children. So Correct. please don't burn it down. 
Yeah, correct. And it, what it is, it's a tongue-in-cheek, uh, I'll tell you, it's a tactic to where they treat the property well. I've actually found a lot of people, when you when you walk into a short-term rental and it says, this is our family home, that's a lot better, which, I mean, generally, it is in a in technical sense, because our kids live there and whatever, but uh, when you walk into a home and it says that, if it's like, hey, we're in Nashville, party it up, Broadway, you know, let's go to the honky-tonks, and who cares about the street and the neighbors? Um, obviously, it's attracting a different demographic, so that the, the whole goal is to help them be thoughtful and mindful because yeah, when you furnish a home or furnish properties, like you, you put a lot of your heart and your soul into it and you know, you don't want them breaking stuff. I'm an, on your side in the sense that I don't want crazy tenants showing up and, and partying it up. I don't, I, if I know someone's going to do that, I, I don't allow them to stay. So that would be, it. it's just, it's a way to kind of have people more be endeared to your home as opposed to, you know, and I understand why, why you should put it that way, but it's, it's so they don't just trash it. In which state do you hold a driver's license, sir? Nashville or Tennessee. Okay. So you have, do you have that with you? Yes. In my backpack. Do you want me to go grab it? Uh, no. If You I, you guys have it, it in the, the, in the packet, it. and I have eight copies here, which I only spent two hours on, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll take your word. Um, anyone else have any questions? Percentage-wise, how much time would you say you spend in California during the month, and how much time would you do you say you spend in Tennessee? So, so it depends on the month, but but again, when we're talking about averaging out over the year, 100. I know I need to hit 183 days, and I hit 183 days. So some months I'm here for two weeks, some months I'm here for a week, but then it averages out in the summer because we spent the entire summer I have with my boys, um, plus Christmas, two weeks, New Year's, two weeks, you know, depending on the year. So, yeah, I would say I'm here probably like. In, in terms of like with my kids, it's about 40% of the time. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely uh, for work too. That's what's so complicated is it, it can change. And I know that owner occupied gets also uh, a little bit uh, muddy when someone's traveling for work. I've been a road warrior since 2015. Sorry. Where do you file your taxes? Nashville. With two dependent children in California, you file your taxes in Tennessee? Yes. Mike, anything? Uh, no, I'm stumped. Okay. Anyone else? Um, I do actually have an additional question. So the second home writer, did you sign that, you signed that document, the second home writer, on the uh, mortgage application for the home in California? No, I think, I believe it was my wife. I mean, she bought it. I did not buy the house. She bought it with her money. Gotcha. It's not mine. She does better than me. I'm one of those guys that <laughs> my, my wife outshines me, or fiance, rather. We're planning our wedding. It got canceled over COVID in case that matters. We have that document. Can we look at that document again? Which one? That, is, uh, that uh, second home rider is for the Nashville property, not the California property. Oh, okay. Right. Sort of my point, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, no, can no, we, I'm sorry. Can okay. we pull that up, or do we have a hard copy of it? I don't have one in front of me. Yeah, I don't believe I have it either. The second home writer is for, uh, like, associated with the mortgage insurance. Is that right? That's my understanding. Okay, yeah. I guess my concern is that's a certification to a California lender as to the status of that home. Right. So it's a bit hard for me to believe that you would make a false, that would be a false certification to that lender for the purpose of obtaining uh, mortgage insurance or a financial product, which is a crime. Yeah, and again, being new to this, uh, I'm not sure if she knew or if the mortgage loan officer told her that it would be okay or what, but yeah, because she, she handled everything. and. So if that's the case, of course, uh, she'll she'll need to know that. But again, we're new to all this, like trying to figure out the SCR, and obviously it's pretty clear our first failure. Is that second home policy? I mean, is that a, your name, her name, both her name. Your names, hers only? Hers only. Again, trust me, it's complicated. It's it's hard. I'm always one foot in, one foot out, and. Again, I know it's it's uh, unique. I think you might have gone past it. I do have one quick question. No. no. 
Waiting for the, uh, the, the property on Michigan Avenue um, on the Airbnb listing says that the owner is Julia. Um, and the permit is in your name? Yeah, correct. So she, again, she helped finance it, um, but I'm the one who lives here. Let's just say she's a mom who knows how hard it is and she knows divorce and having two boys that have no stability when I spend time with them, it's, she's understanding the situation. Julie Kinney as attorney in fact for Aaron Bass. So that's signed on your behalf, right there. For Nashville? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize she was an attorney. Um, okay. I think in this case, she's just acting as the place is. Yeah, yeah, right. sure, sure. Got it. No, I know, but I feel it adds. Yeah, no, I, heft it, to the right signature. To me, there's a there's a mountain of evidence that you know so that this are, is not. I'm true. sorry, are we done? Are we done asking questions, to Mr. Bass? Because I think we would want to discuss this amongst ourselves. Yes. Okay. Very good, Mr. Bass. Thank you so much for your time. We're going to discuss this amongst ourselves, and we'll you'll hear. You'll hear. Well, so I just hang out over. Yeah, please. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, out of the gate. I think first we have to recognize when this permit was issued, what the um, what the ordinance was, and what it permits of us. And in this case, do we have discretion? No. Right. So our the question before us is simply, did, did the, the administrator, administrator err? Yep. And I think uh, there's certainly a million arguments, and they're some compelling and some less compelling, but I mean, do I think I would say that the administrator erred? Probably not, based on what we've seen from the, the research, the neighbor and the appellant himself. My recollection, is his name on the deed at all? We have the address of the deed. But we should do. Is Mr. Bass's name on the deed? Say that again, please. He's looking. If he's not on the deed, how can he apply for an owner permit anyway? Right. That's a. That's a whole. That's a whole. That's yeah, a whole no, other yeah, that is entirely. Just listen to warranty deed, not deed of trust. Let's look at the warranty deed. Yeah, I should be on that. Mr. Bass, I'm so sorry. Where the public hearing is closed, so thank you. Yeah, he's listed. He's listed. Yep. yep. All right, so that means he did have standing to apply, mm -hmm. but that doesn't alter our, the question before right. us, which is, right. did the administrator err? Yeah. In California. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I just don't, I don't find, <clears throat> I just don't find there to be any compelling evidence to overcome the mountain of evidence that right. we've, you know, that both what we have in our packet and then what we heard from the opposition. Uh, so that being said, uh, I would move that we find that the administrator did not err and deny relief. Are we ready to vote? Yes. Okay, so there's a motion to deny relief and determine that the um, administrator did not err in this decision. Can I see a show of hands? Need a second. Oh, we had a second. Second, second Whitney. Yeah, Whitney second. Uh, Terrence made the, you got it? Okay, so show of hands, all in favor? Okay, the motion carries, that was unanimous. So, could someone fill Mr. Bass in? I think this, yeah. So for the time being, we have decided that they did not, that the administrator did not err. If there comes a time where your situation changes and your situation has changed entirely, you can reapply. But that's
that's going to be the decision for now. Okay. Thanks so much for coming down. We really appreciate your time. Okay. Can we call the next case? The next case before the board is 2022-39, Sam Crosa. Mr. Is the appellant present? Yes. Is opposition present? Here. I'm sorry, one and two? Okay. And you folks aren't together, right? We have two, two separate bits of opposition? Oh, you're the appellant. I'm so sorry. Who was the gentleman that just stood up? No. I got confused. No. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. That's me. Easily confused. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. Mr. McBroom, take it away. On March 20th of 2020, the appellant acquired 811A Powers Avenue for $483,000. <clears> this is the property for today's appeal. The property is an HPR cross owned both units, 811A and B Powers Avenue, so the ownership is not divided. Amendment number nine to ordinance number BL 2017-608 by amending section six and adding at the end of the section of 17.16.250.8.1 as the appropriately designated subsections, A, one, only one permit shall be issued per lot in a single and two family zoning district. B, ownership of two family dwellings. I, the property ownership of two family units cannot be divided. I, I, the two family units shall be owned by the same person, and one of the two units shall be the primary resident of the owner. I, 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 prior to the issuance of a permit, an instrument shall be prepared and recorded with the registered office, uh, registered office covenanting that the two family dwelling may only be used under the conditions listed above as long as the STRP owner-occupied permit is valid. <laughs> Mr. McBroom, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. We actually don't have a copy of this summary, um, and it's okay if it's too late to get some, but could, could, Alicia, could you zoom in, or whoever's running the screen, could you zoom in so we can read it and read along? Terrific. And if you could follow along as Mr. McBroom reads. Um, and then we may need you to... Staff is saying that you should have this. We don't. I, don't. I have no motive to lie. <laughs> we don't, yeah. Yeah, we don't have this. <laughs> okay. We'll survive, but we're, we're having a hard time reading that. Shall I go back through that again, or we're good? We're, we're good. You, you, yeah. But let's leave it up there so that when we need to refer back to it, we can scroll through it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Well, um, she'll, she will continue through with the rest of the um, uh, with the case summary, but um, basically what that amendment states is that for an HPR, uh, the owner has to own both properties, and one property has to be the primary residence, right. and the other property is available to obtain a short-term rental permit. On April the 8th of 2020, the owner-occupied STRP permit application was initiated. On July the 14th of 2020, the permit was issued. Verification of residents were a pay stub and a bank statement. As outlined in the above ordinance section, the permit was issued for 811A Powers Avenue. <coughs> excuse me. Thus, 811B Powers uh, Avenue should be the appell appellant's principal residence in order to comply. The code staff contends that this was was the case when the permit was issued. The June 1st, 2021, the appellant, Mr. Samuel Adam Crosa and Ms. Haley Stark Jones, joint tenants with right of survivorship, acquired 819 Vibe Place for $475,000. 
On July the 2nd of 2021, the appellant submitted an application for a not owner occupied SDRP permit for the bow dress. August 24th of 2021, the permit was issued. Mr. Quosa and Ms. Jones' Facebook pages indicate that they are in a relationship and have a child together. On March 11th, Mr. Crosa acquired 707 Shoot Lane, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37075. On March 11th, 2022, or excuse me, that's redundant, for $975,000. This is the position of the Metro Codes Department that this is Mr. Crosa and Ms. Jones' current principal residence. The following are complaints on 811A Powers Avenue, the last of which indicates the property is not the owner's principal residence. These come from the uh, short-term rental hotline. Um, the nuisance at a short-term rental party guest staying at 811 uh, uh, Powers Avenue Airbnb had loud parties Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, way past the hours until 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning. We notified the host on Airbnb, Haley, for it's a Nashville party, listing a <clears throat> listing, and she said that she would speak to the guest, but then the guests were louder and stayed out longer than before. The music and voices, <clears throat> excuse me, could be heard outside and disturbed the neighbors. 528 2022, 3 30 a.m. Nuisance at a short term rental party. Guests at the Airbnb have been outside and loud for hours since like 2 30 a.m. We called the police and alerted Airbnb and the Airbnb host. June 4th, 2022, 6.04 a.m., nuisance at short-term rental party. Guests arguing on the back porch past city quiet hours have a video from them at 11.30 p.m. Friday night. We can email as we can email you as it says the file size is too large. The guests... Um, continue to, uh, to party at this house and we can hear them three lots away inside our house. We were also told that it is an illegal Airbnb is is listed as an owner occupied as owner occupied but is not. 811A and 811B powers are owned by the same person who does not live there. And the website advertisement links are listed. On June 16th, 2022, Inspector John Fells found Airbnb ads for both 811A and B uh, Powers Avenue. The calendars for both could be booked for short-term rentals. Mr. Crozier's vehicle is a silver and gray Ford Raptor, license plate number PKX6832. Ms. Jones' vehicle is a gray Honda Accord, license plate 20AE84. Inspector Felt has made numerous site visits to 707 Shoe Lane, Hendersonville, Tennessee, and has <clears throat> date stamped photos of the aforementioned vehicles from many of those site visits from 8-16-22, or excuse me, 6-16-22 through 8-2-22. On August 22nd, 2022, Inspector Phelps confirmed that both ads remained posted. On August 24th, 2022, revocation letter was sent giving the appellant 15 days from the date of the letter to cease advertising and operating the short-term rental property. On September 9th of 2022, the short-term rental appeal uh, was filed. On October the 14th of 2022, as I began researching the case history, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> for the appeal hearing, I found that one ad was posted for 811B Powers Avenue with a ca uh, Avenue with the calendar set for 30 night minimums today, and the ad for 811A Powers Avenue was also posted. On October the 20th, 2022, the ad for 811A Powers Avenue was posted with a two-night minimum stay. The indication from the October 14th listing of both properties would be that uh, neither would be the primary residence of the appellant. All righty. Anybody have any questions for Metro before we hear from the appellant? I have a just a clarification issue. <clears throat> so they own A and B, but they only applied for a permit for A? 
Yes, that there's only one permit per property per scroll back up if you would to the order. There's only one permit per property per the amendment to the ordinance six oh eight and the ownership of an HPR uh, cannot be divided. The, uh, the owner uh, must own both sides of the HPR. One side must be the primary residence and uh, and the other side can obtain a short term rental owner occupied permit. Okay, but can they rent both sides? They can rent one short term and one long term theoretically. However, that would seem to preclude the one that would be rented long term from being their residence. So in this case, ads were located as a short term for both sides? Uh, at the last time that the 811B was found, it, it had been found for short-term rental availability. The, the initial um, investigation done by Inspector Feltz found that both ads were posted and was short-term rental available, availability. That is determined by the fact that you go onto the calendar and book, and if it allows you to book less than 30 nights, then right. it is considered short-term and it is considered bookable for that amount of time. However, at the last the last time that the um, um, uh, ad was posted for B, which was the last time we checked, was October the 14th. It then had a calendar minimum of 30 nights. Therefore, it was considered long-term rental. <laughs> Nonetheless, lending itself to the so, fact I'm sorry. that it would not be the... Yeah, leave uh, that up there for a second. So... One hour was posted for, this is most recently, 39 minimum stay was B, so that's the one that ostensibly was being used as the uh, permanent residence or primary residence, and A was the one that had been granted at one time, the the short-term rental. Um, yes, ma'am. Okay. And then the ad is reposted as of October 20th? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anybody else have questions? For Metro? Yeah. Um, Phil, go ahead. Where is the 30-day rental listed? Beg your pardon? The 30 the 30 It was, it was uh, listed on Airbnb. It's on Airbnb? Yes. Thank you. Were there any changes? I'm sorry to keep peppering you. <laughs> Were there any changes to the individually held website, the It's a Party Nashville website? Were there any changes to the availability, the calendar availability for either property? Uh, the latest update, uh, we, we did not check okay. after those dates. That's fine. And the uh, B side was for long term rental, Understood. and the uh, A side was reposted for short term rental. Understood. Very good. Thank you. Sure. Okay, you must be Mr. Crosa. I am Mr. Senior Crosa, yes. Okay, well, thanks for coming. Thank you. We, um, You've heard this song and dance before, but we're going to give you 10 minutes to tell us about your situation. There's opposition here, so you're going to want to reserve some of that time to rebut if you think you're going to want to come back and rebut. If not, go to town with your 10 minutes. Alicia will keep an eye on the time. Do you want to give me a, a, a high sign when it's at like six I'll, minutes? I'll also clock it. Okay. You do your thing. Okay, super. And we'll start with your name and your address for the okay. record. Okay. My name is Fernando Crosa. Uh, my address is 9808 Oxford Circle. Paolo, Ohio, 43065. I'm Sam Cross's father. Unfortunately, Sam uh, is not here today. A family emergency called him away, so I drove down uh, to visit with you guys uh, regarding this matter. Thank you very much for taking the time. So, thank you. Very nice to meet you. I'm not sure that we can proceed with... You said an agent of... Of, uh, of the appellant? Oh, look, just let me, let, let give us, we're going to give your time back, promise, but let's just figure this out real quickly. I know that we have had people send an attorney on their behalf. And a property manager. And a property manager. But if you don't mind, we have the rules pulled up, let's just consult them. So okay, super. Sure that. Yeah. Hold that thought. Sure. I'm, I'm his partner in, uh, the, in the business. In the business, Okay. Well, there's a whole nother like. This is an individual or own property or business doesn't own the property. That's a good point. Right. See, that's why we have you here, Terrence. Because <laughs> you're so smart. <laughs> I doubt that. 
We're in deep trouble if that's why we have not <laughs> <laughs> Our standards are pretty low. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the basement. Just to smile. To be sure. <laughs> Madam Chairman, under E1, under the rules. <clears throat> no, no, I apologize. That would be under F. Yeah. Uh, the appellant shall present <clears throat> their case. Yeah. It, it does not address. Now, obviously, if legal counsel is retained, but other than that, it does not address. Um, the ability for anyone else to make the presentation of the case. I wish we had allowed property managers. It does not exclude it. In the past, yeah. yeah. I think he needs to. If he says he is his partner in the business, yeah, I think we need to understand that role. Ms. Kimberling is saying that we've allowed property managers to speak in the past without the owner being present. And if this gentleman is attesting to being the partner in the business. Well, I, let me stop you before we go any further. I can simply, as the secretary, I simply can present what the yep, yep. rules and procedures are, but yep. I'll have to defer to legal. And what do you think? Excuse me. Who the appellant here is and who the applicant um, is it an individual or is it a company? Well, that's the thing. It's an individual. <laughs> it's an individual. Right. So they would need to have. I mean, that's a very good default, point. Um, council to represent them. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as my memory serves, I think in the cases where we have allowed property managers to testify, it's like the LLC business stuff. is actually owned yeah. the property. Yeah. Versus um, owned yeah, like the listed on the permit. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So that's where, yeah. I'm, that's where I'm having a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's that this... A, and, and that's a distinction to be noted. Yeah. yeah. I, I would think that there might be discretion if there was documentation that was um, presented to the board that were proof of the partnership in some way. Yeah. However, 
to my knowledge on the deeds, um, Mr. Cosa Sr. does not appear. But right. that I, I simply will have to let legal, I'll defer to legal on that. Well, I think the argument that I'm partner in a business when it's not a business because it's, an, it's a, a, a ostensibly a individually owned property by a, an individual, not a business, it's hard to say, okay, since you're partner in the business, we're going to hear from you. I think we need to defer. I think we should defer. Yeah, I think well, I'd love, I don't. I certainly don't relish, um, you know, having you come up here and not being able to speak. But or even worse, the opposition who's taken out, taken time out of her very busy day to come here. So, so the reason I'm here is because it did say agent um, in, yeah. in there, and so, so yeah. I, and, and, I and I apologize. That that is, you know, a nuance that we don't quite have. What's the definition of agent? Yeah. What says what agent? What says agent? I'm sorry. What says? There was a document that we were we were given uh, that said that appellant appellant agent of the appellant and or an attorney. Those yeah. are, those are the exact words. Right. But since you're you've come on his behalf, but you have no standing, as opposed to a hired attorney and or someone who's. What truly is your definition of agent? Is what my question. For me, in, it's in someone that. who. For for me, it's someone who has actual authority to appear on that person's behalf. The fact that you're in a business relationship with your son isn't isn't pertinent to these proceedings because this is not a property that's owned by a business. It's yeah. individually well, owned property. Also, on the application signed by Sam Croza, it specifically says, the day of the public hearing, it will be your responsibility to convey to the board your request and the reasons for the hearing. In the case of questioning the zoning administrator and his, his interpretation of the zoning code, it is your job to explain to the board why he is wrong and you are right. right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I apologize. Obviously, it, we, he would love to be here if there wasn't a family emergency. Sure. Could we table it to the end of November, the next hearing then? Would that be possible? Absolutely. That's that's yeah. what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's what we're suggesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is what it is. Okay. So, well, we need a motion to vote on that. Do we need a motion to defer? I think since Or would we just consider it as the as the appellant not appearing? I, I think to be safe, you would need a motion to defer. Okay. Doesn't it defer by rule if the appellant doesn't appear? The appellant hasn't appeared. Under the rules under 4B, in any case where an appellant fails to appear before the board, the case will be deferred one meeting. Yeah. Yes. Well, so yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no question that this gentleman is not the appellant. Yes, so, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that case will be deferred. You can share that information with your son and tell him it's in his very best interest to appear in person. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great day, Mr. Crosa. And my apologies, ma'am. This is not the first time this has happened, and we, we're very grateful for the time you took to come down. So please consider visiting with us again next month. If, uh, if the board will acknowledge and we will, we will note, um, in order to save her time and effort, yep. uh, we took an, a, an affidavit notarized. Would you consider that as a public appearance? Absolutely. Yeah, we can't take it into the hearing now because we're not having the hearing on the case, no, but we'd no. accept an affidavit. Well, she, yeah. she doesn't have it at this point, but we we just recently come to an, an affidavit that should be acceptable sure. according to legal for the board's purposes, and so... And, I'd, and, and she should include that she made the effort to come today for for this case too. Well, we, we, will, we will note that and, right. and in, the, in the presentation next uh, next meeting. All righty. Okay. Sure. Well, once again, <laughs> we made quick work of it, guys. Today's hearing the short-term rental appeals board. Next month's meeting will be quite long. <laughs> Right. Good. Yay. Today's hearing, today's nice short hearing of the Short-Term Rental Appears, Appeals Board is hereby closed. And now that the hearing's closed, I will tell you guys, I'm not going to be here next month. I never miss. has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.